and talking about the challenge that she thought she would face. In the meantime, Sue has with her a rather special guest. Sue? Indeed, there is one person who has found the night more eventful and more dramatic perhaps than any other. We are honoured, indeed amazed, that she could find the time in the midst of all her commitments to be with us here this morning. Madam Prime Minister, welcome. Thank you. And good morning. May I say that my husband and I send heartfelt election greetings to you all, wherever you may be. I would like to say, as Britain's first woman Prime Minister, that it is a great honour for you. Though I did have one anxious moment when my support fell away and my marginals started slipping. My greetings go particularly to all of you who voted Conservative. And for those of you who didn't, don't think that because you didn't vote for us, we shall ignore your needs. That's not the conservative way. We shall simply forget them. And that's one election promise we will keep. But, you know, I would like to mention, I would like to mention the one man without whom all this would have been impossible. I am referring, of course, to Mr. Heath. After all, he put me where I am today. But it should also be remembered that I put him where he is today. Oh, no, actually, he's delighted for me. But the other man who has assisted me greatly is, of course, Mr. Callahan. In fact, I understand that when the result was announced, Mr. Callahan was lying in his bath. I suppose that after three weeks of lying in television programs, press conferences and constituency meetings, he's finding it hard to break the habit. But you know, I can't wait to get into number 10 and get on with the job. There's such a lot to do. There's new carpets to lay, doors to be painted, floors to be polished, though I have received many kind offers of help. For instance, the extreme right-wing law and order group have offered their services. They want to come in and hang the curtains. Oh. But looking back at my election campaign as I traveled around the country, I met lots of interesting people, or workers as I believe they're called. They were always offering tea. In fact, during the second week I was drinking so many cups that Parliament wasn't the only thing I was running for. Mrs. Thatcher, I'm afraid I have to interrupt you there, if you don't mind. Oh, well, of course I don't. <laughs> I'm sure you have many things to get on with. Absolutely. Janet Brown, did you actually vote for her? Uh, well, of course, you know, ballots are a secret thing, aren't they? And, um, you I don't sound as if you did from the script you got, I must say. <laughs> yeah, well, I did. How long have you been doing her? Well, uh, it all started in, uh, I suppose, 1975, and when she won the first ballot. And um, that's when it all began. How closely have you had to study her? Because we, we constantly hear that she has been worked upon to change herself in mm. dress and in mm. hairstyle and in voice. Yeah, well, she is changing a terrific amount, I think. I mean, all the, the last, time? I think so, because the last time I was watching her, I mean, not, not only was she, she she's speaking much quicker, but she's starting to use the hands and the, you know, and all the expressions and the things that are happening up here, you see. And that didn't happen before. She was fairly, uh, fairly rigid. And uh, that's sort of breaking up, and I, I get a terrific kick out of seeing that happen.